Hi, my name is Alice Kimbrough. I'm a student physical therapist assistant from Jeff State. Okay, today I'm going to be talking about benign proximal positional vertigo. So first, what causes the PPV? Um, there are two different causes of the PPV. The first is cannulithiasis. So this is when a person experiences the PPV. It is because the otocania is dislodged, clumping together, or has formed a cannula. The otocania is found in the person's ear and it's responsible for detecting a person's head movements in relation of the head to gravity. So the cannulas formed um, then move within the semicircular canals of the ear. Once movement has begun in the semicircular canal, the deposits move within and across the endolymph and the ampulla moves. So this effect tricks the brain into thinking that the patient's head is moving even though they are standing still. Once the cannulas reach the end of the semicircular canal, the sensation of movement ends. This process generally takes 15 to 60 seconds and is different in um, patients. This commonly occurs within the posterior semicircular canal. So the next cause of BPPV is called cupulithiasis. This is the condition where the ocania adheres to the ampulla. In this cause, the hair cells become diverted within the ear when the head is moving, thus causing the sensation of vertigo. This commonly occurs in the horizontal canal. So how does BPPV affect the body? So there are several different common signs and symptoms of this condition. When the head changes position, vertigo begins. Vertigo is a sensation of movement. Um, the patient can also experience nausea, sweating, lightheadedness, um, blurred vision. They typically feel like the room is moving. Sense of spinning when laying supine and bending down. This often occurs with different um, head movements. They can have loss of balance and um, as an astigmas with the eyes is oftentimes seen. So next we are going to talk about who is all affected by PP BPPV and some statistics about the condition. So typically women are more affected than men. Um, it is seen in up to 64 people out of every 100,000. This condition is reoccurring. Um, it affects 20 to 40% of all vestibular disorder patients. It affects people commonly between the age of 50 to 70 years old. Um, there are several different risk factors associated with this vestibular disorder. Um, this includes people with increased fluid pressure in the ear, migraine-induced ischemia that results in movement of the otocania, head wounds or head trauma, infections, or other inflammatory diseases. Next, we have um, common medical interventions used for BPPV. So first, um, the doctor has to diagnose this disorder. Um, the condition may be able to disappear on its own. However, this can take up to several months to disappear. So in order to diagnose this disorder, the dox halpock maneuver is used. This involves passively moving the head of the patient from upright to the head being an extension and rotated 45 degrees. This will um, cause an astigmas to occur. The test shows where the particles are and which ear is being affected. The treatment for this um, involves cannulith, cannulith repositioning. It's used to move the particles that have dislodged back into their original position. Um, depending on which canal the debris is in, the positions to be the positions to put the patient in will differ. This depends on the canal's relationship with gravity. If the patient is experiencing apogeotrophic horizontal PP, BPPV, the Gufani movements and head shaking movements are used. If the cause of the BPPV is cupulithiasis, Oscillation of the mastoid process is beneficial. If repositioning is ineffective in treating this condition, surgery is an option for patients. Um, the surgery involves putting a plug in the semicircular canal that is being affected, therefore making it no longer able to detect head movements. Next, we're going to talk about physical therapy interventions for BPPV. 
Once the correct canal has been identified as the cause of this condition, physical therapy is beneficial in performing the body and head movements on the patient that will move the debris back to their original position. So this is called the cannulith repositioning. Based on the results of the dix halpak test, the optimal positions will be chosen to put the patient in. The position and length of time to leave the patient in that particular position is based on where the particles are in the ear, such as how far they've gone in the semicircular canal and which canal um, is being affected. Oftentimes when the condition has clear, balance training is required. Um, balance training can include walking on uneven surfaces or just balancing on uneven surfaces, walking while turning your head into different positions. Um, so treatment for BPPV um, usually includes up to two visits. So next is examples of cannula three positioning procedures. So the one on the right um, shows a person's entire body being moved um, to balance out the particles. And the one on the left is just using head movements, turning the head at different angles. Again, this depends on um, what canal the particles or debris is in and the relationship of the canals to gravity. Um, so next, why did I choose this topic to present on? This is an interesting topic to me because of the exercises used to treat the condition. It's not typically what you would think physical therapy would be. At my last clinical site, we had a patient who experienced severe vertigo that interrupted her daily life. She came to see the physical therapist a couple times a week to decrease her symptoms. My clinical instructor allowed me to observe the treatment session multiple times. The treatment session involved putting the patient through several different positions. This one included her whole body. She used the one that um, I mentioned earlier where the patient would sit upright and then she turned her head into different angles and then rapidly laid her um, from right side, sit back up, left side. And then after that, um, she would examine her eyes um, to see if the nystigmus was still there um, or if any adjustments had been made. So next, this is my references that I use. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down below.